<laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Tracy from Noise from the Pit, and we're here with... I go by the name of Blacklight District. We're here in Austin, Texas. We're at Come and Take It Live on January... 19th. Yep. Already. I can't even believe it's 2020. Crazy. Um, so... You've been out on the road with Atlanta's Way yep. on this run, and you've, you've had an extensive run with them so yep. far. Definitely. What's that been like for you? Um, it's cool because you know a band that has the kind of following that they do um, to kind of like, you know, I guess show some support and like throw some love, for lack of a better term, my way uh, to bring me out to perform in front of their audience is awesome. Um, you know, it's uh, it's like an old school way. I mean, you know, Ozzy used to take out Motley Crue and Metallica and this and that. So it's cool to see an independent band like that, which is the same as me, um, kind of be able to, to be in that spot. And in the same way, you know, like I do uh, a lot of YouTube and Spotify uh, kind of stuff. So we just kind of work together and kind of have this like as a crew. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, do a lot of things together. Um, again, man, it's 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 a whole new world out here in terms of the music industry. Um, people are having great careers and making things happen, and uh, I think uh, he likes to have someone who's making some shit happen out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for yeah, sure, definitely. for sure. Kind of like a family. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. That's cool. Yep. Well, uh, let me ask you. You grew up in South Dakota. I did. Um, how did growing up in South Dakota influence how you are as a musician today? That's a good question. Um, See, in South Dakota, I'm from a small area. It's called the Black Hills. It's kind of by Sturgis. I don't know if you've heard of the motorcycle rally oh, yeah. up there. Um, but, you know, there's not a lot of music. There's not really, like, a scene or something. So the way that that actually helped was that I kind of, I pretty much had to, like, follow my own path in a way. Yeah. You know, like, create opportunities. Um, there wasn't, like, a scene you can kind of just jump on and, you know, like, just know what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of had to lead the way, and, you know, just growing up there, like, like you know, starting out doing the local thing, building a following, and then, you know, starting to reach out to people and try to make something happen. But definitely, uh, you know, the sound and all of it kind of just works together because there's no blueprint to follow, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, in a way, I think that's a benefit, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty pretty excited about that. That's cool. That's cool. It's... Uh, it's definitely interesting to see um, coming from an area where there's not already a scene For sure. yeah. and literally creating that blueprint yep. without having that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's important nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Because again, like a lot of people would think, oh, I got to move to LA or, which I did. I lived in LA for over a year. I lived in Orlando. Um, but it's like a lot of people think you kind of have to go somewhere to make it happen. But nowadays with the internet and YouTube and Spotify and all that kind of stuff, like Bro, like, we all have the same platforms. So I have the same platform that any mega pop star has. So if you can just get your music to the audience, like, you're already there. That's one of the advantages back in the day when you had to have a label to get your music out. Nowadays, anyone can get it out. If you can get it in front of people, then you're good to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So It's just finding, finding a platform where you fit in and where you might be able to get an opportunity. You know what I mean? So For sure. That's hella important. Now, a lot has changed in the last oh, 10, sure, 15 man. years, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> well, yeah. let me ask you, coming from um, from that region, the Carolinas, which is beautiful up there. Dakotas. Or yep. Dakotas, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm so that's sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what, what led you to music being up there? Um, well... <sighs> I don't want to like bring the vibe down or nothing, but like, so my mom passed away at an early age. Yeah. And uh, like, you know, I guess as cliche as it sounds, like as a kid, like that's like the the way like I found that I could like escape for lack of a better term, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I just like really started writing music at a young age like that, just to kind of like, I guess a way to like cope with that or whatever it is, you know, I think that's kind of how it all started. Um, and I happened to hear someone, my uncle actually played me Ozzy Osbourne's No More Tears. Yeah. And uh, like I was obsessed ever since then. And like literally here today, like because of that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask you, uh, what, what was the first instrument that you picked up? Drums. Yeah. Uh, when I was about eight years old, my grandparents got me a Sears drum kit out of the old catalog. They had like a little kid set, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I didn't have a hi hat at first, so like I obviously like I did start on the coffee cans and shit like that, and I finally got the real thing, but no hi hat, so I'd still stack the coffee cans for the hi hat. Uh, but yeah, and that was like I was loving like Fleetwood Mac, and then my grandma had like yeah. a, a VHS tape of a Fleetwood Mac show, and I would just play those drums over 
over and over, bro. Like to that. And that's kind of how it started. Then I got out of it for a minute, and that's when the Ozzy thing and all that other stuff happened. And uh, yeah, then I started singing and writing and playing guitar. And now, like in the studio, I, I do all of that. I produce, mix, like I do, wear many hats on things, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. And yeah. Anybody that's in that game, because they're, the platforms are out there for 100%. everybody. hundred percent, you have to. You do have to yeah. learn how to wear yeah. many hats. And, and even now, like when I hear bands say like, oh, like I need a record deal or this and that, it's like, no one's gonna sign you first of all. Right. Like you need to, especially with how it is nowadays, you should be able to build your own buzz and get your own fire rolling. You know, like if it's right, like for me, I don't even know if I'd accept a label or, or, or consider that right now, just because of the, platforms I have for myself and my fan base that's basically given me an entire lifestyle change over the last couple of years with streaming and stuff like that um, so yeah I think like you know you should be able to get your own buzz and if, and if you have good songs like you'll you'll know you know what I'm saying so yeah for sure now which three words would best describe a black light district uh, performance what could a new fan expect um, three words. Yeah. Um, rock, rap, and energy. I like it, mm-hmm. especially the energy. Oh, yeah. Energy. Well, I would have threw a lot more, but I only yeah. had the three. But uh, yeah. Uh, again, you know, like when it comes to the show, like that's again, like I started out loving groups like Metallica and Guns N' Roses and Molly Crew and like Black Sabbath, and that's what I grew up on and loved. I got Ozzy Metallica tattoos and all that kind of shit. You know, just over time, like. I, I, nowadays I like a lot of hip hop and pop and I, I just like a lot of everything nowadays so like when I'm in the studio or whatever it is like I just whatever comes out that sounds good I don't care what the genre is if this one sounds like a rap song but it's a banger like that's what I'm gonna go with you know I'm, I'm not into you know I used to try and play the radio game in the rock world and do all that but it's just such bullshit nowadays because anyone can buy their way onto the charts I have a few times you know um and, and it just means less and less, especially radio airplay. Um, not that it's not still important, because it is to a degree in other formats specifically. Um, but yeah, no, again, just like the fan base, I just had 110,000 YouTube subscribers. I Congratulations. I appreciate that. that 250, that's not easy. No, it's not. <laughs> 250 million streams. So for an independent artist like myself to get a quarter billion streams in two years, um, has been more than I could ever ask for, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and again, finding new ways to promote your music. I did it without anyone supporting me, and I stream 95% of the bands on the charts now. So that's the cool thing. Where's know? that class? It's in my studio, hanging up above the uh, yeah. computer. Yep. Yeah, that's cool, yep. man. That's... And uh, I have a song called Cold as Ice that just went gold as well. So. Right. Yep. That's the, uh, with the Fortnite video. Yeah, right? Minecraft, actually. Yeah, Minecraft. Yep, right, so right, that, right. that's, I'm glad you brought that yeah, up, because yeah. that's really the way that this music kind of blew up, was, you know, just building my YouTube channel a bit, putting up music videos, this and that, and then, you know, we did the... Uh, we did this Minecraft collaboration with a big YouTube channel who happened to have heard of me, and I reached out. Um, we did one in the first one, like it just blew up. It was trending on, on YouTube right away, like in the top 30. Katy Perry played at the VMAs the night before, and the next day I was one spot under that, trending worldwide on YouTube, getting a million streams wow. a day, bro. Wow. So it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? Because again, it's like. It's not the traditional platform of being on the radio or this and that, but just to watch a song literally blow up on the internet, and that's when like Sirius XM started playing it, um, this and that, and lo and behold, like we're, it's at almost 100 million streams by itself. So again, just shows the power of today, that's, you know? That blows me away, yep, man. Yep. Like, and again, there's like, there's so many, like, there's so many famous like YouTube stars or whatever the case may be that maybe a lot of people haven't heard of, but there's people making millions of dollars out here. Um, and just because you don't hear about it, doesn't mean it doesn't have something big going on, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I look at what I do. Uh, some people have, you know, some people come to the show, some people are new to what I do. Um, but in a, online, to have like such a loyal, passionate fan base like that, like, again, like every day I'm out here, like, I'm living the dream, like, because I grew up wanting to do this. So anytime I get to come to Austin, Texas, or somewhere I've never even been, get to perform, you know what I'm saying, and make fans and this and that, like, that to me, I've made, you know what I'm saying, in the sense of like living the dream. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Well, are there any, um, is there in the hip hop community anybody that you'd like to work with or anything that you may have going 
I mean, or interested in doing? I, I'm working with a few artists now. Yeah. Um, we're going to do some collabs. Uh, we, already, we just finished one today. I just got the session sent over from a pretty popular rapper. Um, I wish I could just say it. Not yet, not yet. Um, I'd love to do a post with that. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple like that, so I'd love to do that. Like another great example, Post Malone has the new song with Ozzy on it right now. Yeah. That introduces Ozzy to a whole new legion, a whole new generation of fans. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I just love seeing seeing things like that. You know, and and again, as as this technology takes over more and more, like the genres are starting to become way less nowadays. Where like it, everything has a blend exactly yeah. exactly because there's so much going on and like people consume product and music so fast nowadays that if you're just going on there and you're just a rock band and you just have drums bass guitar and vocals like it's really hard to cut through anymore because hit songs like that are a dime a dozen you know yeah. what I mean so but again the song is still the most important thing so well move, moving on to a different direction as far as music goes I mean you you're way established in the streaming for sure, and that's that's a major absolutely tour life. Right. What are some important lessons that you have learned when it comes to tour? Um. Well, early on, I, I learned that, uh, especially when you're supporting a tour. You know, what I'm saying when you're opening, like obviously not everyone is there to see you, um, and I see a lot of opening bands, you know, on these tours that. You know, like, when, when people have an attitude at that stage, it's like, bro, you ain't gonna get fucking far at all. Like, some of these people turn into yeah. jokes, and it's just like, you goofy. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> no, it's just, again, learning to be humble and nice to people. It's not all about, like, ooh, I'm a rock star, or this or that. It's like, dude, at the end of the day, like, we're all here to have a good time. Like, let's do the show. Let's have some fun. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't have to be taken so fucking serious. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just little things like that, that over the years you just start to learn, and it just makes for a better experience. If it were me, I'd be concerned about where I'm stopping. Right. Food. Oh yeah, uh, well, the crew, my crew uh, likes to eat a lot, so we we actually had Golden Corral today. Nice. nice. <laughs> it's like a it's like a uh, like a tradition almost now. But, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Again, you know, at this stage, I mean, we can stay in nice places, and, it, and again, I'm grateful. You know, what I'm saying like to be able to play my music, get my music out there, travel, and be able to do it not as a struggling artist anymore, you know? Um, it feels good, for sure. Well, would there be any advice for any up-and-coming musicians, uh, whether it's touring, whether it's production, whether anything? Um, I mean, you've already stated um, that you, know, you don't need a record. Right. You don't need to move to L.A. You don't need to move to New York. Right. What... What would be something that would be unique that you can think of uh, to give to somebody that would help them? Well, um, I don't know if unique would be the right term, but it really comes down to, again, at the end of the day, it's going to be about the song. If the song can take off or the song can do good or the song has potential, that's where your potential is going to start. So if it was anyone who's, again, I still see so many young guys, oh, I'm, I'm trying to save up to go in the studio this night. It's like... Bro, anybody can have a studio now. I mean, we all have laptops and computers. Anybody can record. Get in there and learn that shit. I mean, my first album cost $25,000 to record. Second album, $10,000. After that, I pretty much bought all the equipment myself and learned it. And I can work on my schedule doing what I want to do. I would say, like, learn to produce, mix, become a better writer, and always, like, just stay practicing and trying to get better. Um, and keep it as real as possible. That would be the absolute best advice. Keep the music real. Regardless if you think it's going to be a hit or if it says this or that, like it has to be real because people can see through something not genuine a mile away. Nice. That's, I mean, that's definitely sound advice. Uh, but let me, let me ask you, what, what do you have next? What do you got going on for well, 2020? It's a new, new decade. Yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm all about the new decade. So the coolest thing for me, um, this coming Friday, I'm dropping a new song called Over This. And Times Square in New York City, there's going to be five massive billboards 
um, right in downtown Times Square, like with my picture promoting the song. So that is something I'm really excited about. And again, humbled, grateful, um, because again, you see mega pop stars up there, Taylor Swift, yeah, uh, Lil Nas X, who did the Old Town Road track. Um, so for me to be in the middle of Times Square with five huge LED billboards uh, to promote this new song, to me, that's like a hell of a, an accomplishment. Um, and beyond that, just keep writing the best music I feel like of my career right now and putting out some legendary shit this year. Nice. Yeah. You heard it here first, by the way. <laughs> there we go. Well, where can everybody check you out? Uh, hit me on Instagram at Blacklight District, L I T E, uh, Twitter at Official BLD, uh, BlacklightDistrict.net, and hit me on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. The best way to promote uh, for free is to just stream and share the music and help get the word out there. For sure. Well, I want to thank you today for uh, thank you, man. for meeting with us, man. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to the show. Uh, I'm like excited. I was, like I was telling you earlier, man, I was just jamming for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good stuff, man. Yeah. I, I really dig it. Well, I'm and excited. And again, you know what we do is different, um, but that's the whole point. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's as real as it gets. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, once again, I appreciate Dude, it, Dude, I appreciate you, man. Anytime. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. You heard it first. Noise from the pit. <laughs>